programs over there as well. So please enjoy the performance. Thanks. I wooed thee with my sword, but I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, with brevely. Happy be Theseus, I renown you to do. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her right and interchanged love tokens with my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness, and my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius, I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law. Hermia, be advised, fair maid, to you, your mother should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case. Either, if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Can you endure the livery of a nun to be a baron's sister your whole life? So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Time to pause by the next new moon. The sealing day betwixt my love and me. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to my mother's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he will. But then, sweet Hermia, and Lysander yield. You have her mother's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry her? <gasps> Scornful Lysander! I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than this. Demetrius, I'll avouch it on his head, made love to Nader's daughter, Helena, and has won her soul, and she devoutly dotes on this spotted and inconstant man. I confess I have heard so much. For you, Hermia, look thou arm thyself to fit thy fancies to thy mother's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up. Come, Papa. Uh, my dear, uh, Aegeus, Demetrius, come. With duty and desire, we follow you. I me for aught that I could ever be. The course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, Spite, too old to be engaged, too young. Hell, to choose love by another's eyes? If then true lovers have been ever crossed, then let us teach our trial patience. Good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote, seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. 
there, Judge Burmia, may I marry thee? And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and into the wood, a league without the town, <coughs> there will I wait for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Venus doves, by that which knitted souls and prosperous loves, by all the vows that ever men broke, and number more than ever women spoke, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. You promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair, that fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair, oh happy fair. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smiles such skill. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Tomorrow night, the time that lover's flame doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised the steel. And in the wood where often you and I, upon thick primrose beds, were wont to lie, there, my Lysander and myself shall meet. Farewell, sweet playfellow, and pray thou for us, and good luck, bring thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight from lovers till morrow, deep midnight. Oh, my third, yeah. Helena, I do. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. How happy some or others some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all, but he doth know, and as he errs doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Spite! Oh, hell, I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. You both are rivals and love Hermia. And now both rivals to mock Helena. A trim exploit, a manly enterprise, to conjure tears up in a poor maid's eyes. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so. For you love Hermia. This you know, I know. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. I will not. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. Look, there she comes. Yonder is thy dear. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander, found my ear. I think it brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? The hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Lo, oh, she is one of this confederacy. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid. Have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to join with men in scorning <clears throat> your poor friend? I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. I do persever. Counterfeit sad looks make mouths upon me when I turn my back. But fare ye well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. I stay, fair Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. Lysander, where'd you tent all this? Hold off, thou cat, thou burr, thou vile thing, let loose. Why have you grown so rude? What change is this? Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you. Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why, then, you left me? Oh, the gods forbid in earnest, shall I say. I, by my life, be certain. Nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee. Love, Helena. Oh, me, you canker blossom, you thief of love. Why have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine, if faith, have you no modesty, no maiden shame? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you puppet? Why so? And have you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? <gasps> Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. 
You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower, park again. Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. To Athens will I bear my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why get you gone? What is it that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. <laughs> well, when she is angry, she is keen and shrewd, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Little again? Nothing but low and little. Let me come to her! Get you gone, you dwarf, you minimus of hindering not make grass, you bead, you acorn! Let her alone, and speak not of Helena, take not her part. Thou shalt abide. Follow if thou darest to try whose right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. You, mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you, I, nor longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. I am amazed and know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest or commits thy knaveries willfully. Oh, believe me, Lord of Shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me that I should know the man by the Athenian garment he has on? Yes, leave these testy rivals so astray and one come not within another's way, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and fatty wings to creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor has its virtuous property, to take from thence all error with its might. Make his eyeballs roll with haunted sight. All this derision, when they wake, shall seem but a dream and fruitless vision. Haste, make no delay. You may affect this air by day. Up and down, up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, follow my voice. Where art thou? Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, coward, art thou flat? Nay, art thou there? Follow my voice. Why comest thou not? Villain is much lighter healed than I. I followed fast, faster did he fly. Oh, 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 the dark had even way. And here, full rest may. Ho, 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 coward, why comest thou not? Thou runst before me, shifting every place, and dares not stand or look me in the face. Now, go thy way! Fainness constraineth me to measure up my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, weary night, oh, long and tedious night. Oh, and sleep that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from mine own company. Yet but three, come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make more females mad. Never so weary, never so in woe. I can no further crawl, no further go. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Heaven, shield Lysander if they meet a fray. Sleep sound on the ground. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in thy former lady's eyes. Jack shall have Jill, naught shall go ill. The world will have its king again, and all will be well. Come, 
tippy down in this flowery bed, while I thine amiable cheeks employ, and stick musk roses in thy sweet smooth head, and kiss thy fair large ears, my gentle joy. I must to the barbers, for methinks I marvelous hairy about the face. I'm such a tender ass. If my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. Oh, what? Don't thou hear some music, my sweet love? <clears throat> well, I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongues and the bones. Hey, ho, nobody. Oh, I say, my sweet love, what thou desirest to eat? Oh, truly, methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. <clears throat> sweet hay. Good hey, hap no fella! Hee-haw! Oh, sleep! And I will wind thee in mine arms. Oh, how I love thee! How I joke on thee! Welcome, good Robin, see thou this sweet sight? Dotage now I do begin to be for meeting her of late behind the wood, seeking sweet favors for this people. <laughs> I then did ask of her her changeling child, which straight she gave me. Now I have the boy. I will undo this imperfection of her eyes. But Robin, take the transformed scout from off the head of this Athenian swain, but first I will release the fairy. Be as thou was wont to be. See as thou was wont to see how my Tanya wake you, my fairy. My Oberon, oh, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> there lies your love. <laughs> oh, 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 I do loathe his visage now. Oh. Silence. <clears throat> come with me and walk with me and rock this ground whereon these sleepers be. <laughs> oh. oh, my king. Take off that transformed scowl. Now when thou wake us <clears throat> with thine own fool's eyes, peep. Oh, my king, attend. Weary king, attend and mark. I do hear that morning lark. Come, my lord, and in our flight tell me how it came this night that I sleeping. It was found with these mortals on the ground. We will, my fair queen, up to the mountain's top and mark musical conjunction of hounds and echo in conjunction. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once when in a wood in Crete. They bade the bear with hounds of Sparta. Never such musical a discord did I hear. Such sweet thunder. My hounds are bred out of the Spartan kind, so flew, so sanded. Cry more tunable was never hollow, nor cheered with horn. Judge when you hear. But soft, what nymphs are these? My lord, is this not Hermia? sleeping here? This Lysander is? And this Demetrius? This Helena. Good morrow, friend, St. Valentine, if asked. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. How comes this gentle concord in the world? <laughs> my lord, I should reply amazingly, but as I think, for truly what I speak, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens. 
My lord, Fair Helen told me of their purpose, and I in fury hither followed them, Fair Helena in fancy following me. But by some power it is, my love to Hermia melted as the snow, and all the faith, the virtue of my heart is only Helena. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Hermia, I o'erbear your mother's will. These couples shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens, three and three. They'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Apollota. It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think that the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Aye, and it's Hippolyta. They bid us follow to the temple. Why, then we are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. Uh, when my cue comes, call me and I will answer. My next is most fair, Pyramus. Ah! By whom? Peter Quince? Who? God's my life stolen hence and left me asleep. Oh, I have had a dream. Ask the wood of man to say what dream it was. Me thought I was. Me thought I had. Ah, uh, but man is but a patch fool if you were to offer to say what me thought I was. The eye of man hath not heard. And the ear of man hath not seen what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, for it hath no bottom. And I shall sing it before the Duke. Nor peradventure to make it more than gracious, I shall sing it at Disney's death. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Is he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. And if he come not, then the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. You have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus but he. Masters, masters, the Duke has come from the temple, and there are two or three more lords and ladies married. Oh, sweet bully Bottom, and the Duke had not given him sixpence a day for playing Pyramus. I'll be hanged. Where are these hearts? Where are these lands? Oh, glorious hour. Oh, sweet bottom. Masters, I am to discourse wonder. Let us hear, bully bottom. Oh, not a word of me. Get your apparel together. For the long and the short is our play is preferred. <gasps> oh, my God. And most dear actors, eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breaths. No more words. Away. Go. Away. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have? What rebels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? There is a play, I see. Some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, I fear it is too long, and it makes it tedious. But I will hear that. I love not to hear wretchedness or charge. It says they can do nothing of the kind. The kinder we to give them thanks for nothing. May it please you all. The prologue is addressed. Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This man with lime and rough paths doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink. Poor souls, they are content to whisper, at the which let no man wonder. This man with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn presented moonshine. For it was by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus tomb there, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. 
and as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lie in vile with bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat the glade with bloody flameful blade he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast, and Thisbe tarrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers swain at large discourse, while here they do remain. And this same interlude doth befall, that I would snout by name present a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think that had in it a cranny hole or chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often, very secretly. This the wall that, and this the cranny is right and sinister, who with the few lovers are to whisper. It is the wittiest partition that e'er I heard. Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. Oh, grim look, knight. Oh, knight with you so black. Oh, knight, whichever a day is not. Oh, knight, oh, knight, alack, alack, alack. I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And now, a wall, O oh sweet, O oh lovely wall, that stands between her father's ground and mine. Show me thy chink to blink through with thine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Joe, she'll be well for this. But what see I? No, this be do I see the wicked wall from whom I see no bliss? Curse be thy stones for thus deceiving me. And the wall, methinks, should curse again. No, sir, in truth he should not. Deceiving me is this be uh, cue. She's to come in now to spy her through the wall. Yonder, here she comes. <laughs> oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moan. For parting my fair pyramus and me, my cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, the stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice. Now will I to the wall to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love, thou art my love, I think. Oh, think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace. Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. I kiss the walls whole and not your lips at all. Wilt thou, at Nini's tomb, meet me straightway? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Thus have I wall my part discharged so, and being done, thus wall away death go. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. The worst are not worse if imagination amend them. Well, it must be your imagination and not there. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous spouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when I erupt in wildest rage does roar. roar! They know that I, one snug to join her am, a lion fell, or else no lion stand for if I were as lion come and strife into this place, twere pity on my life. A gentle beast with a good conscience. The very best at a beast that e'er I saw. This lanthorn doth the horn and moon present. Myself, a man in the moon, do seem to be. Oh, I am aweary of this moon. Proceed, moon. All that I have to say is that this lanthorn is the moon, myself the man in the moon, this thorn bush my thorn bush, and this dog my dog. This is old Ninny's tomb, but where is my love? Oh, 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 oh. oh. <clears throat> ah! Well roared, lion. Well run, 
convince people. Ah! Well shown, Moon. Truly the moon shines with a good grace. And then came Pyramus. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beam. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by your gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take of truestness besides. <gasps> but stay, O oh spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dull is here? Eyes, do you see? Oh, how could it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear! Oh, thy mantle good? What oh, stain with blood? Oh, broach ye fury spell! Oh, fates come, come, cut thread and throb, well, brush, conclude and well. Oh, beshrew my heart, but I do pity the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lie in frame since Lion Boyle hath here deflowered my dear, who is? No, no, who was? The fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears, confound, outsword, they woo the path of Pyramus. I, the left path, my heart doth up. Ah, thus I die, thus, thus, thus. And now am I dead? Now am I fled, my soul in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. No! With the help of a good surgeon, he might yet recover. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes? She shall find him by starlight. Here she comes, her passion ends the play. La, 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 la. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? O oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak, quite dumb. Dead, dead! A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. Lily lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks, are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan. Ah. Ah. Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, blade, my breast in brew. And farewell, friends. Thus this be end. Adieu, adieu, adieu. <gasps> And Lion and Moonshine are left to bury the dead. I and Wall, too. <laughs> no, sir, I assure you, the wall is down that watered their fathers. Would it please you to hear the epilogue? Uh, right, so Burgomaster ends? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no excuse. But, but come, your dance. Leave the epilogue alone. Tide in spring, tide in spring, 
joy we only pray. Ring, time when birds do sing. Hey, ding a ding a ding. Hey, ding a ding a ding. Hey, ding a ding a ding. Sweet love is love the spring. In spring time. In spring time we only be pretty ring. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here. While these visions did appear. And this sweet and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will bend. Give us your hands if we be friends. The players shall restore amends. Thank you, Patterson. Thank you. Uh, text your friends. We've got another show at 12:30. Thank you ever so much, everybody.